house. We already talked a little bit about Norman, but keep an eye on number 22, Titus Wright Jr. 6'8", out of Georgia, averages 10 points, 6 boards, and shoots 64% from the floor. Definitely somebody to keep an eye on tonight. Now, the man who operates things for is the 15th head coach in program history, Dwayne Stevens. He arrived in Kalamazoo after nearly two decades on Tom Izzo's staff. This is his first collegiate head coaching position. And for the University of Dayton, touched upon it already, but this is potentially, as far as anyone can tell, the tallest starting five in program history, and that's saying something. There have been players here that have touched the brown with gold for Western Michigan, and tonight's opening tip-off is brought to you by Premier Health. The ball is up, tap, and this Wednesday night encounter at UD Arena is underway with the freshman, Charve Jumps. On the ball, quickly for Kamara, as Dayton sets the half-court offense. Shot is up from distance, won't go, tapped around towards the corner, collected, and possession stays with the Dayton Flyers. The big question tonight is going to whether it be Mike is going to handle that point guard spot, first possession turnover. Handling the basketball from the perimeter at the point spot. Certainly the first time he's ever done that for the Dayton Flyers. But that is a huge key to this game. Can Mike, and I know, Char of Jumps. Yes. But Mike. Can Mike handle this role? A 6'7 freshman. You're asking a lot of this kid. Can he go out and play the point guard position consistently for 30 plus minutes? Not turn the ball over. Distribute the basketball. Get his team in and out of offenses. And make shots when, when available. In a little trouble along the baseline, and we get a violation and a turnover. So, consecutive gifts to get this one rolling. It's almost like both teams have a, have a little bit of nerves. You know, or the Dayton's, holiday spirit. Right, yeah. <laughs> Turnovers, giveaways. Lob in, left side of the lane, shot is up, back iron and away, but Flake needs foul. And you're going to see that all night from Dayton. I mean, they got to go down low all night. They have a decided advantage in the paint with all their big guys, the talent that Dayton has on the post, what they can bring to you on the post, and how strong they play down low. You're going to see Dayton go inside all night. Uh, frankly, right, I'm surprised that Western Michigan came out man to man. You know, if, if, if they can play a zone, I mean, some teams can't because they just don't do it. I'll tell you, tonight's the time to play a zone. I mean, because you're playing a team that doesn't have guard perimeter depth, that isn't, doesn't have guys who really drive the hole and make plays with the basketball on the court. They have a bunch of big guys out there. What's a great way to stop big guys? Have a zone where you cluster around everybody inside and force Dayton to prove they can shoot some threes. At the moment, Dayton is trying to force them to prove they can bring the ball into the front court with some full court pressure. This is the third meeting all time between the two teams. Dayton has won each of the two prior contests. Zeros on the board, minute and a half nearly in. Lights will turn around, jumper will go. And Mustafa Amstiel gets the ball off the rim. Correct myself, one nothing to Dayton on the free throw. Amstiel for three, front iron. Good block out that time by Western Michigan. Everybody had everybody on their back. Titus Wright fought to keep Holmes on his back. He was able to go get the basketball off the uh, rim. Well, neither team here in the opening moments is really on their game, but we'll see how it plays out. I thought Western Michigan had a good possession last possession. Got the ball down low to right for a nice little turnaround jump hook. But even Deron Holmes couldn't block, just wasn't able to get it to fall. Down low, here we go. Kamara trying to back in. Will turn around, floaters yeah. in, out, foul. That's tough for anybody. I don't care who you are. I mean, if, if you if you get double barrel to Monica Tomlin and Kamara, and you got Deron Holmes down low, that's really tough. I mean, this guy is tough with the ball, physical specimen, fading away a little bit, but only because of the contact. He takes the ball up strong down low, and he gets fouled a lot down there. It is really hard to play him one on one, even with help. Free throws, the name of the game here in the early going. In fact, that's where all the points 
are coming from, it would seem. Missed second shot, but another offensive rebound for Dayton. It's Tyler oh. Johns on the reverse. Nice play by Mike coming around, showing his adaptability, his athletic assi assistance, the ability to put the ball on the floor, underneath the basket, and spin it nicely and softly off the backboard. 4 nothing. Dayton has the lead. Norman, floater. Ball actually hit the rim, I believe, but he's got a foul. Yeah, nice little lob pass. Looks like Ron Holmes got a, got a little push here, right there. A little hip check, like a hockey hip check. His right was going to the rim. Fischel called it. Now, are they going to call this a shooting foul? They're going to call it a shooting foul. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, the hip check happened. If you want to call that foul, okay, that's, that's a reasonable call. But he got hip checked before he touched the basketball. And I'd love to get, I'd love to uh, get two free throws every time I thought about shooting it when I was fouled. <laughs> if that were the case, I'd have shot 4,000 free throws in yeah. my career because I was always thinking about shooting it. Yeah, yeah. But that, unfortunately, that's not the rule. You actually have to have the basketball and be attempting a shot. So, hmm, good call and bad call by the official wrapped into one big fat Tootsie Roll. I like Tootsie Roll. Yeah, they're good. Four to one. Shara jumps. Tamara from Amsteel. Holmes looking. Looking. Hasn't found an option he likes just yet. Mustafa Amsteel has the ball, puts it right back in. Baseline, kick to the corner, but we have a foul. I thought maybe it was a step on the, excuse me, yeah, it was right the first time. Stepped on the uh, baseline. And again, you're seeing Dayton really emphasize getting the ball down to the post and getting their big guys down low touches on the block. That's where they see their advantage, and they're right. But the problem is, when you get double teams down there, you got to kick it out. Somebody's got to be moving with their feet on the perimeter to catch the ball and be ready to shoot. That's something right now Dayton they're struggling with because they don't have those players who normally play those roles. They're all in crutches on the sidelines. Hastings has an open look for three. Ball strong. On goalie and Mike on the rebound. Cross-court pass on the diagonal. Kamara's going to go to the ball yep. on the two-handed flush. That's what we talked about pregame. Kamani Kamara can play the block, but that's a perimeter game. He has the ability to put the ball on the floor, especially in transition, and go to the rim. He's got to do more of that because on this team right now, those skills, those plays are a premium with Smith and Elvis on the bench. Not yet four minutes in. Maddox. Nice. That was a tough three-pointer. It doesn't go. Good shot. Good use of the body. Good body control for Holmes, the second. And that's a shot he wouldn't have made last year. He wasn't strong enough yet. You can see a year in the program, a year at the weightlifting has allowed him to get stronger where he can get bumped like that, arguably fouled, bumped like that, and still go up with enough control, elevate, and make the shot. Cross court. Pull up jumper, one hander, in yes. and out. And shooting lows continue. Omsi. Charjong. Kamara again working his way in high off the glass, misses, but off the backside, it's home with the footback. Big guys down low starting to go to work. Western Michigan again, a big team that rebounds the basketball well. Got to get a timeout because they're just getting pounded down low by a Dayton team that right now going, okay, we can play without guards. They have yet to make a field goal. 0 for 4 are the Broncos. University of Dayton Arena. A-10 meets the MAC tonight. The Flyers up 10-1 on the Broncos who have yet to hit a field goal. Need to improve in that area. Of course, Dayton comes in. About the only good thing with being in Nassau was the weather, because certainly the games didn't go the way Dayton might have envisioned them. Yeah, and even the weather. I mean, you lose three games in a beautiful setting like that. You wish it was thunderstorm and raining outside. You want no one to have fun. And the three L's here. I mean, that's tough. 
You go out, you lose three games, and frankly, that BYU game, now, you know, up 32-9, start the game, up 16 points at half. That is a real tough game to lose, and that shakes your confidence as a team. You wonder if you're doing the right things and you have the ability to, to beat teams consistently. That's that's something that Dayton needs to work on coming out of the, that three-game stretch. Can they get their confidence back, especially without some of their, their best talent on the, on the floor? Cool. Shooting lows continue for the Broncos in transition. Sharves off. Down another corner. Blakeney. Right back on the block, the beat continues. Up for the shot, Holmes, and he's fouled. And you're, if you're West Virginia, you're gonna see this all night. Dayton's gonna reverse the basketball, get it to one of their post guys, and say stop us. That's why I'm talking about why not you're in a zone. I mean, if you're in a zone, you can, you're gonna, those big guys have to adapt a little bit. You can double team a little easier without leaving everybody open on the perimeter. Maybe Western Michigan just doesn't feel comfortable in the zone. As tough as the BYU game was, or Wisconsin was a one-pointer, and things were tight with North Carolina State until they finally pulled away. But one of the ways it could potentially come back to bite Dayton is a, a lack of uh, you know, big, quote-unquote, big wins non-conference as far as an at-large bid comes to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I agree with that. But you know what, the other, and that's kind of like, you know, in your rear view mirror, that's water in the bridge at this point. Now the big worry is this stretch where Dayton's playing a lot of games against teams they should beat. So you're not getting a whole lot on the upside if you're beating a uh, Western Michigan or somebody like that. But you can get a whole lot on the downside. You lose one of these teams in a stretch when you got when you're trying to figure out how you're gonna play without Smith and Elvis, you lose one of those teams, that can really hurt you for the NCAA tournament. More than not having quality wins, those quality losses really hurt. Bump there from Kamara. Team second foul. By the way, memo to the Broncos. Shooting and making shots is a key part of this game. Must, in fact, make shots. Not quite sure about that foul, by the way. I mean, Tamani Kamara looked like he was playing pretty good post defense. Not sure where the official came with that uh, call. Norman Jr., the short lob pass for Fuller. Left handed dribble down to the corner. Shot for three. That one won't go. Yeah. Hubbard with the miss. Yeah. Shooting frustrations continue to grow for Western Michigan. They've only got a couple of wins to start the season, but this certainly isn't uh, reflective of the team they have. Nice little turnaround. Well, I mean, on defense, they got to figure out something because they're, they're not going to have even a chance to win this game if they just stay in that man-to-man -man and let and let Dayton just pound them on the block. Because you can't... You can't Effectively cover two post guys in a man to man. You're going to get people wide open sometimes, or at least now, Western Michigan's made a shot. So a little sigh of relief. But they need to get the job done on the defensive half. Inside 13 minutes to play in the opening 20. Charmjohns for three, air ball. Hastings, Hannah. And around to get the ball is Norman. Lamar Norman Jr. has to make a play here. His team is starving for offense. He's the best player in the match. Time to show it. Shot clock inside of 10. Norman Jr. up. Floater won't go. But there's a foul. And it's going to go against Western Michigan. You could see Lamar Norman Jr. was thinking, I gotta make a play. He drove around his man and said, I don't care if there's a guy right here, I'm going to the rim. He made a good play and going to the rim, but you know, good teams take charges. Tamani Kamara is right there. You got against Dayton, you're not gonna get a lot of free runs to the rim. You gotta pull that up and shoot it. Maybe in the back you can get a free run to the rim like that, but not against the Dayton Flyers. They're gonna help out. Good help out defense. And now we've got Yule in the game. Clearly not afraid to use his bench. Uh, 
no reason to think that uh, guys can't step up, right? That's the expectation. Next man up. Well, Mike played a good game. Nice shot by Scott Hoffman. Mike played well from the point guard position. You know, had that initial turnover, but looked very fluid and easy. The point guard spot, even in, ha in transition, coming down and running that transition play. Let's see how Yule and Brea hold up. Clock is paused, 11.45 to go here in the opening half. Dayton shooting 60% from the field. It's allowed them to build an advanced, uh, a little home court which they haven't seen a lot of. They get to go home. I'm not sure how much they're going to be feeling good about themselves if they don't start making shots. Yikes. Making shots. And they're getting pounded on the glass. I mean, this is Western Michigan. They're, this is a team that number one in the MAC in rebounding advantage. And this kind of... It emphasizes what's happening down low for right now for Western Michigan. Mukherjee with a nice block, even though there's a body foul there. But Western Michigan currently down eight, minus eight in rebounding, ten to two to Dayton. If that continues, all these gentlemen get the cars warmed up early because this one's not going to last long. You'll call for the foul. Free throws good. Hannah hits them both. The other thing I'm not quite sure I understand Western Michigan, if they have any press in their arsenal, now is the time to roll it out. I mean, if you could press Dayton, you should be doing that right now and saying, okay, Mr. Yule, can you bring the ball up the court in a in a real-time situation against a press at the Division One level? I mean, that, that, that's a fair question to be asked. Ball is stolen, but there's a foul, so possession will stay with the Flyers. But every time, you know, Western Michigan, like, they made a free throw. They, they just ran back and let... Let you just dribble the ball off the court. Nice and happy. Have some frustration on the Western Michigan bench about this call. The foul going against Wright, and he has been hit, has Dwayne Stevens, with a technical. And he's looking to get his money for it now. <laughs> I mean, I, I bet he learned that from Tom Izzo. Tom, Tom Izzo, Coach Izzo is going to get his money for it. If you're going to tee him up, that's fine. But there's a period of like 10 or 15 seconds after you get the tee where you know you can pretty much you know, get away with something. He's getting his money's worth now. Um, seal hits them both. And Dayton possession. Jostling down low, the officials trying to maintain control over the game, not let it get out of hand. No trouble getting the ball in bounds. Yule on the right-handed dribble. Wide open, looks for three. Runs around, little 360 on the rim and out. Maddox Jr. is called for the foul, his first and the team's seventh. Western Michigan struggling down low with Dayton's physicality and size. Here, I mean, Maddox Jr. didn't even turn around and look. I mean, he was just facing away. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's like pass interference in, in, in football. You got to look at the basket. You got to look at the basketball. You can't just, like, turn around and grab onto the jersey of the guy you're trying to keep from getting a rebound. That's foul. You got to turn around and act like you're trying to get a rebound. I'm still feeling it from the free throw line. Boy, officials have to do a lot of talking to these players early in this game. Now the largest lead of the game for Dayton. Well, you know you're playing at home. 
Ball just bounces around, bounces around, bounces around, almost goes out. Nope, I'm gonna go in. 15 point advantage. One of seven from the floor, Western Michigan. Ten on the shot clock. Run the offense. We got a foul. That'll be the second on Yule. Number five on the team. I'll tell you what, Brady Yule did his job. He came in. He played solid with the basketball in his hands. Didn't turn it over. Moved the ball around. And he got off the court. Yeah, the two fouls are the two fouls. But you know what? He's there to he's there to, to soak up minutes for Mike, so he can stay fresh and come back on the court and play some point guard. And Western Michigan just gave Brady Yule essentially five easy minutes. Instead of making his life a little difficult and testing his abilities, they let him play at an easy pace and get into the game. I don't understand that. Well, he wasn't sure about the foul call. He got a nice big grin from Coach Grant as he went to the bench. Yeah. And I think Anthony felt his pain. He got a grin from Coach Grant because he did his job. His job was to go out there and, uh, and to play point guard. You know? And he did it. And Western Michigan really let him do it. Turnover on the inbound. Outside the three-point arc. Entry pass. And we got a bump on the baseline. Western Michigan getting beat down low, both on the glass and on their, their post defense. This time, the first bump, second bump, well, he got, got away with the first one. But the second one was finally cold. I mean, you got you to move your feet. It's tough. Post is tough against Dayton. There are, a lot, there are a lot of players in white who can score from the block. And they were quick and athletic. You got to, against Dayton, you got to move your feet. Against players like that, you got to move your feet in the post. You use your arms, you use your elbows. You, you try and bump people with your body, you get fouls. Eighth team foul. Second on right. Uh, more good free throw shooting. That hasn't always been the case in the early going this season. An area that Anthony Grant wants his Dayton Flyer team to shore up. I love that from Coach Grant. He's got a team with no, essentially no guards that would have been starting for him. A freshman, a walk-on, and Kobe Brea, a good guard, but mostly a shooter, and he's pressing. Now, see, that's what I'm talking about. I don't care. He's like, I don't care who I'm playing. I don't really care who my players are. We're going to go out and play Dayton basketball. We're going to press. Two on the shot clock. Just realized, so the ball is up from three, misses everything. That's another turnover. Nice. Well, so far, the uh, film of the first half will not be sent to the Western Michigan Basketball Hall of Fame. Going to hold you to that. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Fifth turnover to go along with eight fouls. Dayton protecting the basketball pretty well. There's two turnovers to this stage. Nice pass by Mike, by the way. That was a really nice pass by him. Dribbling to his left with his left hand and able to kind of look back over. He's so big, you know, six seven, so big, able to kind of throw it back over and see a, a cutting, you know, Holmes going to the basket and a nice little touch pass over. And that he looked very comfortable making that. That's a that's a a guard point guard like play that Mike looked very comfortable making. Holmes the second misses the first free throw. Gets the second to go. And again, Anthony Grant saying, I'm pressing you. I don't care who I got. We're pressing. And that's that's, that's what you do. I mean, that, that just shows you how good of a coach Anthony Grant is. Had years as an assistant, nearly two decades of that at Michigan State. He's had a good education as a coach. And Tom Izzo is as good as, the, as they come. Oh. 
Norman's been held scoreless. Currently leads the back in scoring. And finally, he's able to get something in the basket. A three-pointer it is. Good lob the other way. Oh, oh, wow. Ron Holmes showing his athleticism, able to get some contact and go up awkwardly under the basket, spin it off the glass and make that shot. Two in a row, nope, but the rebound. Norman, back out. That's what Western Michigan does. When they're playing well, they rebound the basketball, especially on the offensive end, and this guy makes shots. Not that time for Norman. That was off to the right from the moment it went up. Good reversal. Power in the post. And that's the formula. We saw Dayton come down the court, pass the ball to the right, nothing open there, reverse the basketball quickly all the way around the court to Duran Holmes on the po on the post. And Western Michigan had zero answer for that other than to play Duran Holmes one on one. But guess what? That's not working. You're down 27 8. Do something different. Dayton defense gets beat that time, and Norman gets it in. The foul before the shot. And that'll pause the clock at 7.52 to play in the opening half. And the Dayton Flyers shooting 62% from the field. Just 27% for the Broncos. And that has built a big advantage for the home team. Dayton on top for the visiting Broncos. Spectrum News 1. That last Western Michigan foul, by the way, has gone to Lob Singer, his second. Well, if you're Western Michigan, you're saying to yourself, okay, you know, we're down 17, that's a lot. But we've got the best player in the MAC who can make a lot of threes. They've got to solve the defensive problem. They're, right now, they're getting absolutely killed on the block, and it's leading to free throw after free throw after free throw by Dayton, which who has already shot 15, about to be 16 free throws in this game, which is like a pace for 50 free throws in the game, which is a lot. And so that's because Western Michigan is there. Look, they're putting their kids on a block against Holmes and Kamara, and they, I mean, you can't go against these guys one on one. You got to get some double team efforts out of it, and you got to make threes. And Hastings does. Big bucket for the Broncos. Yeah, now what? Dayton's going to reverse it a couple times, look for somebody on the post, or just lob it and throw it into the wing. Yeah, sometimes highway one's the right way to go. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is just, you know, switch it, switch it, pit, you know, pitch and roll, just kind of get the ball down the court and say, play a little one-on-one -on -one basketball with a two-man game, a little pick and roll action, throw it up at the rim and be more athletic. No help defense that time. Yep. That's always tough duty. When you're on the block, it doesn't matter who you're on the block who's facing you one-on-one -on, -one on the block for Dayton. If Deron Holmes is on the court, you know he's lurking. And that's, I don't care how good of a move you make, you've got to account for both the guy you're, who's guarding you and Deron Holmes every time if you're in the paint against Dave. That's tough. I mean, it's hard enough to beat one guy. It's, it's when you have to beat uh, one your guy and then worry about another one coming over like that. <laughs> it's tough. I mean, he thought he was free and clear. Little did he know he had zero chance to get that ball above the rim because Duran Holmes was right behind him. They looking to equal their longest lead thus far. Uh, Charles Jomps shot is no good from three-point range. But he's got to take it. I mean, he missed the shot, but that's the right shot for Mike. I mean, the kick out from Kamara, who got double teamed on the post, and Mike had an open shot. For teams, as, as Dayton plays better and better teams, they need, they're going to be looking at this film to see how Mike plays at that point guard spot. If he looks hesitant or scared to shoot that ball, 
and teams are going to take advantage of that. He's got to keep shooting that ball every time he has an opportunity like that. Etchison has entered the game for the Broncos. Norman on the ball, 10 on the shot clock. Get some help from Fuller, pull oh up three, oh, oh, count oh, it. Boy, tough shot, and he made it. Contested three, three point, three feet behind the three point line. I mean, that's, that's how tough it is to play Dayton. They contest every shot, and Norman showed some talent there by burying that one. If Western Michigan could play some, uh, some defense. He might have a chance in this game, but that's that's Mike showing his size differential. He just pushed, you know, Gus Etchison down, right down the block. He's got like Gus Etchison maybe five seven. He pushed Gus Etchison down the block and said, "I'm six eight. I'm going to score the post." Norman's three point effort was blocked by Kamara and then tipped away Blake. Great hustle. Great hustle by Josh Norman. Got went up for the shot, got it tipped, blocked. And he was able to hustle away out of bounds so he could throw it back in and Dayton off a Dayton player. That is just a hustle play that everybody on the team should stand up and say, boy, if my best player can do that, I can do that. Tough shot. Four. Tough shot, but it drops for Maddox. Pull up jump shot with Tamani Kamara on you. That's a tough shot, especially when you're 6'4, Tamani Kamara is 6'8, and all is 6'8. 14 point Dayton lead. It's the closest this has been in a while. Turn around. Nope. And flying in from behind, but unable to gain control is Kamara. Western Michigan ball. Says you noted Dayton had some difficulty playing with the lead on that trip to the Bahamas. And another opportunity to show they can manage the game here tonight. Do you know, Dwight, it's almost like it's a different Dayton team. Oh, look at this. Kamara making plays. Oh, 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 boy. We talked about him making plays off the block, on the perimeter. Well, one part of the perimeter is the backcourt on the press. And Anthony Grant put Tamani Kamara out front on the press. Dividends paid right there with Kamara showing his hands and athletic ability to create something outside, take it to the rim, and make points. Back at the other end. Shot. He's getting, he's getting, Norman Jr.'s getting yeah. heated up. Yeah, he is. He's definitely eating away. Hastings has five points. Norman up to 10. 4-10 remaining in the half. Dayton has led throughout. The advantage boosted by a 9-0 run. They've led by as many as 19. misunderstanding on the other end and back for a long range three that was a hopeful effort at best but the rebound stays and Norman's going to get another opportunity Amsil prepares to come back in for Dayton from the corner shot is short and we got a timeout and a man down that is Norman injured we'll take a break 339 remaining here in the first half Dayton up by 14, a game they've led by. But it's going to be tough sledding for Western Michigan if they don't have Lamar Norman Jr. in the game. And now Western Michigan goes to a little 1-3-1 zone. Something I think they should have been thinking about from the start to make it as difficult as possible for Dayton to find people on the block. Notice it's not so easy anymore to find somebody posting up. Except now, got to get some double teams. And that zone paid dividends for Western Michigan. Now they got to find a way to score without their best player on the court. An emphatic block from behind by Kamara. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll run down the day's news headlines and get you the latest weather on the ones. Plus, first half highlights and stats. That's all coming up in just a little bit here. Three minutes. Head of the key. Long distance three. This won't go. And all 
Flyers battling for the rebound, and Brea comes out with it. Good pitching catch with Charjan. He decides to drive the lane. His little floater is short. And we have a whistle and a foul underneath. The most important part of that play is Mike being healthy. And there's nobody left to play point guard. And Mike drives, he does what he's supposed to do, which is to create, find a gap in the zone and drive it. But took it to the rim and created the foul on the charge. With time and experience, he'll learn to pull that up just a few more feet away from the defender and take a seven-foot jumper. Get late in the opening half. Down 14. Couple of consecutive buckets. Get this thing inside double digits. And it'll look a whole lot different for the Broncos. They're not there yet. Question is, can anybody for Western Michigan step up and score points without Josh Norman on, on the court? And that's half their points. Kind of like points. Nobody really has looked consistent like they won't even try and make those shots. Um seal wide open look But it's a bit strong and then lost out of bounds is the ball possession back to Western Michigan Tavari Sims was was like you know, Holding on for dear life To Tamani Kamara and Tamani Kamara was like he was wearing me like a shirt out there And you got to give I mean you got to give Sims some credit I mean, but he was he did get the rebound, but boy, he was just holding on for dear life down. Ball to the floor. Oh, nice move. And off the glass. Quick throw at the other end of the court. Blakeney acrobatically collects. Look for three. Count it. Or Kamara making shots and plays from the perimeter. We talked about it in the open. Kamani Kamara has got to be a player with all these these perimeter gate kids out He's got to be a guy who steps up his perimeter game and school We know he can score from the block We've got to see him score from the three-point line and score with the ball on the floor Both hands so he can create that per perimeter play that Dayton lacks with Smith and Elvis out 60 seconds remaining in the half Cross-court pass shot with one of the shot clock goes up won't go batted around nice job that time by Tafari Sims again. Hubbard came out with the ball. Baseline move, little right hander, front iron, back iron, and away. Tafari Sims is feeling it. Timeout, And Dayton's going to take a timeout. First of consecutive home games for the Flyers, Southeastern Louisiana, up next on Saturday afternoon. And then they go off to Virginia Canyon. Can't just rely on you know, going out there and piling up 20 plus wins and think you're going to get in the NCAA tournament. They got to go. They got to go deep in the Atlantic 10 regular season, push towards the top of the conference, and then see if they can win this whole thing, this tournament, so they can guarantee themselves a spot in the NCAA. At one point, the Wisconsin really could have made a statement. Time running out on the shot clock. Charjans puts up the contested three, won't go. Yeah, poor possession by Dayton, especially coming out of the timeout. I guarantee you, Coach Grant had something different in mind for the Flyers. And Western Michigan, the opportunity to go make a shot and get it inside of 14 points. Charjans nearly gets the three quarter court, court shot to go. Doesn't quite pan out for him, but a uh, little baby run, shall we say. The teams go to halftime. Things don't look quite as sin listed for the Broncos. Kamara Holmes, Armsteel, Blakeney, and Charjomps for the Dayton Flyers. And the biggest news flash is Norman not out to start the second half for Western Michigan. Boy, you want to talk about... Uh, Making it doubly hard for Western Michigan to climb back in this game. Dayton also coming out in a 1-3-1 zone to test Western Michigan's ability to move the basketball around and get a good shot in their zone offense. It's a shot for three. <laughs> Off the glass. <laughs> it counts for Hannah. Oh, boy. There should be a little bit of a rule in the rule book that that only counts for, like, two points. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings them back. Of the Broncos to within 10 they've trailed by as many night as many as 19 so effectively have cut that Disadvantage in half and we get a whistle and a play stoppage 
And there's the front of Wright's back. And Western Michigan just, you know, going at it down low in the post, really pounding against Dayton. I think they're a little frustrated down low with Dayton's success in the paint. You gotta move your feet. I say it again. You gotta move your feet in the paint. You can't get frustrated and use your hands. That was Wright's third foul, so Coach Stevens will bring him out of the game. Opening minute of the second half, 10 on the shot clock. For three, on seal. Nope. Good box out that time. Two of 10 from beyond the arc on the night, shooting almost 55% overall, the Dayton Flyers. To the right wing. It will be off the glass again. Yes. But this time not off the glass and into the hoop. Well, that one actually hit the glass below the rim. It's tougher to score from there. Yeah, much, much tougher shot. Nice move. Monty Kamara just showing his versatility. It didn't seem like he had any real crack to go to the rim, but able to use his quickness. You look at him and say, quickness? That's not the first thing that jumps out at you. But watch Tamani Kamara square up and just use his quickness. Quick explosion, baseline, right around the defender. I mean, that's not normal for a 6'8 guy with the size that come, and the power that Kamara has. Second team preseason selection by both the coaches and the media. Charjean. Oh, what's that? How about that? A little over the head pass. A little no look over the head pass, Mike. It's one of those don't, don't, don't. Nice pass. Mike doing it with a little flair and stop. Well, you like that as a freshman. You like that with a kid as a freshman coming in. Watch. So get down here. Get, looks like he's a little trapped. But he's just kind of got to do the over the head, behind the head pass to the cutter for the bucket. I like that. That is, there's a little appropriate arrogance in a player who in, in his first start as a freshman at the point guard spot in his fifth game essentially sixth game is able to come out and do that i like that a little contact after the arm seal shot but it goes high off the rim and behind the backboard it'll be possession western michigan and a chance here to get the deficit into single digits we got a foul, and that goes against Kamara. That time, Tamani Kamara just a little too aggressive in the full court press. Got his hands on the Western Michigan player. I mean, if you're a Bronco fan right now, you're looking at the end of the bench with Josh Norman chugging Gatorade, wondering if he's going to get that cramp situation worked out and get back in the game. It does not look positive. Inside, outside, baseline move. Opposite corner for three. Nope. Kamara has the rebound. And tough pass. Opportunity the other direction. The oh shot boy. is wild, but the foul is called. You get another look at that. See. I do not like that call. That's the official anticipating that foul. I don't think Mike fouled him. I think Mike did a good job of really just pressuring him, but not bodying him. That's just, that's the official believing right now. He's thinking, okay, he's going to foul. He's a freshman. He's going to foul it. Now, to me, that is not a foul. I mean, that, you're, you're entitled to your space. You didn't run, you didn't run into him to create that contact. That to me is a no call, play strong, or don't get the shot. There's Josh Norman on the bench right now. Chugging Gatorade. Free throws good for Hubbard. It says something that Western Michigan has been able to reduce the deficit from 19 to 11 with their leading scorer on the bench yeah. for much of the time. Showing a little moxie. The Broncos showing a little moxie. Dayton needs to figure it out. A little fingertip roll for Holmes. And that's where Dayton's advantage lies, just pounding that block. Really hard for Western Michigan to defend that. Shot for three. Short. Underneath on the rebound. Sims can't get the shot to drop. Blakeney. 
front iron. That time, good call by the official. First of all, great pass by Mike to find Blake. He's streaking. And a good call by the official. As Jefferson Monegro just kind of stepped in front. Of Blakeney going to the rim. Now they're asking the question was, did he get the shot off in time? Well, I got the rule. I understand there's a double rule, foul rule. My question is, where's the double foul? I mean, you can't have a charge and a block at the same time. That's a fundamental principle of basketball. You can't do both. It's one or the other. It appears that time the officials may have called in the first time that I've been involved with college basketball in the last 35 years. A, a block and a charge. I don't know how you do that. We'll have to go to the film. By the way, you, you're going to have to go to the film because nothing like that has happened since there was a peach basket hanging up over there. Oh, that's a nice soft little finish for Sims, a peach basket. With the, with the basketball with the laces on the outside where if you bounce it the wrong way, it bounces right or left on you. And that's when they were calling charges and blocks at the same time. Fifteen and a half remaining in the second half. Lob in underneath. And a foul in from behind. That one will go against Sims. Working against Holmes. And we'll take a break with 15-29 remaining in regulation. More of Red Panda. And the Flyer Faith on Spectrum News 1. Boy, it's going to be important for Dayton to get better and play better in that stretch. I mean, look, they're winning this game right now. But, you know, through 24 and a half minutes in this game, we got an 11-point lead against Western Michigan, a team that has struggled early in the season that doesn't have their best player on the court. And that, that is not, that's not the first 36 minutes that I think Coach Grant was hoping for. Ball stuck. Now it's unstuck. Holmes could believe he didn't get a foul call. Ron Holmes takes it up strong. Few people on the planet are going to go up and block a Duran Holmes uh, dunk. And when something happens like that on Duran Holmes, you tend to start thinking foul. Because it's hard for somebody to go up, elevate, and to stick Duran Holmes' attempted dunk in the backboard. Spin move in the lane. A lot of traffic. Bodies fall to the floor. Shot is missed. Foul is called. I'll tell you, I give Tamar, Tafari Sims a lot of credit. This young man has come off the bench and has played hard. It has not been pure pretty, but it's been hard. That's a tough shot. That was a tough move. He had almost zero chance. Even if he had not been fouled or making that shot, Dayton bailed him out by getting him fouled. Got to make free throws for Western Michigan. Got to make free throws. Kamara exits as that was his third foul. Shooting five of six from the field. That includes one three-pointer. Dayton needs Mustafa Amzil to step up right now. He's got to step up and start making plays. He's one of five from the field right now, which is not very good, obviously. He's got seven rebounds, which is strong, but he has not been able really to create anything offensively. And he's got the skills to do it. Dayton needs that perimeter presence, and Amziel can bring it to him. Entry pass for Holmes. He's fouled. Sims called for the foul, picks up his third, team's fifth of the half. And the news flash is that Lamar Norman's back on the court for Western Michigan. That's big for Let's them. Let's see if he can stay healthy enough. And feel confident enough to make plays. Sharp jumps. So I'll tell you, this game is in. This game is in contact. I mean, they're down ten points. You make a couple threes, and we've got ourselves a competitive basketball game. Holmes off the miss. Good decision by Mike not to press it. Now he's going to try and get down low. Tough Dallas. Yep. 
Play. That was a tough pass by Mike to his big man. Ron Holmes did a terrific job of catching that ball and not traveling. Most big men who don't have the athletic ability that Ron Holmes have has would have either not caught that ball or caught it and traveled. Mike's job as a point guard is to not put his big man in that position. And he'll learn that. As time goes on, he'll learn that. Good pass. And the dunk. Great entry pass from Sharv Jean. That was all Mike. He read he read the double team, saw Holmes wide open, and made the nice little light pass down low. Clock isn't the biggest enemy right now for Western Michigan, but it will become so. They gotta put a put a run together, even if it's you know five, six points. Shot oh. is good, foul is called. Manegro goes to the line. Manegro, a little pump fake. Once you get the defender up in the air, it's all bets are off. And you, it's, you have the ability as the offensive guy to create the contact and make the shot. The uh, news flash there is that's Mike's third foul. And right now, he is the only point guard on this team that has kind of played at, the, at this Division One level. Yeah, albeit for a few minutes, but he's done it pretty well in this game. I mean, Yule, the walk-on, really hasn't had a lot of time at that point guard spot. and hasn't been tested yet. Mike's been tested and has held up pretty well with his ball handling skills, his ability to pass the ball and get the team in the offense. And be careful he doesn't get that fourth foul. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Green gets him out here pretty soon for a little blow. Rough and tumble underneath the basket. Holmes pops up. That foul goes against Hannah. This is second and the seventh of the second half for the Broncos. We're not yet through ten minutes. Yeah, the free throw shooting parade is, is continuing for Dayton. Lots of free throws for Dayton. And their offensive struggles. I mean, Dayton is not, not really scoring at a frenetic pace, and their offense has been uneven. And we haven't seen those, those breakouts in transition. And their half court offense has been a little thready. Those free throws are going to be huge. Drive to the hoop. Brea went up. And contact on the push is the call. That time Western Michigan getting out in transition and actually creating some opportunities for themselves. Getting the ball down court. Good outlet. Get it down quickly. Dayton just a little lack of days ago. Getting back down the court off the missed free throw. That free throw. Puts the deficit back in single digits. 19 was the largest advantage for Dayton. Score then was 27 to 8 with 8.15 to play in the first half. The Broncos. This is an important possession for Dayton. They have struggled offensively. And Western Michigan is flying back in this game and feeling a little wind in their sails. Dayton's got to figure out a way. To get some half court offense. Western Michigan looks like they understand that the ball is trying to get, they're trying to get the ball down low every time. Can they adjust? Turnover. Transition opportunity. Maddox on the ball. Shot for three. Won't go this time. Good work on the glass. Boy, big missed opportunity for Western Michigan there. And you can see Western Michigan is adjusted. They understand that Dayton is going down low every time. Basket work continues. Boy, some big guys banging together underneath there, trying to get shots off, trying to get shots to go. The bodies are slapping down low. People are going at it. And that's, you know, this is what Dayton does best. Frankly, this is what Western Michigan does best. They're, they're the best rebounding team in the MAC. 
So these are two teams that rebound well going at it down low when neither one is really doing much from the perimeter. And Dayton right now doesn't have a perimeter offense. Their entire offense is run through the block trying to get offensive rebounds or shots from their post guys on the block. And you're seeing, we talked about that perimeter offense. Where is it going to come from? Well, now doubly where it's going to come from because Jelani Kamara is on the bench and he's been the most consistent perimeter guy for Dayton. Right now, Dayton's a very one-dimensional basketball team on the offensive end because they're really looking to get it on the block and score there, and that's pretty much all they got. After spending much of the game above 50% from the floor, they're now down to 45. Shot from the long-range territory is too strong. Now, I'll tell you, Western Michigan has been awful from the three-point line in the second half. I mean, awful. They've had their shots. If they made half of those, this game would be a two-possession game. Ten on the shot clock. For three. Long rebound. Yep, breakout. Norman's going to pull oh. up and do the three <laughs> thing. In and out. Well, that's three straight empty position, possessions from the floor. Two missed three and a missed two sandwiched in between. And as a result, the Dayton Flyers continue to hold on to a 10-point advantage. Western color night offensively for either of these two teams. And it keeps Western Michigan on the cusp of getting really back into the contest. Now, I agree with you. I think this is a... For Western Michigan, this is probably the best case scenario. We had played as poorly as they have played, played big stretches without Norman, their best player, to be down 10. Man, now's an opportunity. Man. Brady Ewell's in the game. He's done a good job so far for Dayton. But if you're Western Michigan, don't you turn up the heat on Brady Ewell and say, okay, show me you can play point guard at this level in a tight game? Shot for three. Nope. Rebound into the corner. Hannah grabs it for the Broncos. Again, Dayton struggling to do anything offensively if it's not on the block. Western Michigan was cold as ice to start this thing, and Dayton had built a 19-point advantage. Oh boy. Terrible shot by Norman. Western Michigan doing what they do best, getting an offensive rebound. Right side of the lane. Yeah, tough duty there. I mean, you catch the ball, you feel open, but then you turn around and there's Duran Holmes, and you go, okay, I'm not open. Now, it's, it's tough on your ego to catch the ball on the block like that, turn around three feet from the, from the bucket, with an open shot and realize that you need to get rid of the ball and get it back out to somebody else because your shot's about to be blocked. Fuller with the foul. That is his fourth. And into the one and one the Dayton Flyers. Nice touch for the big man. Four of seven from the Free throw line is Holmes. He's 7 of 11 from the floor. Second one is off the back iron. 11 point lead. Yule in defensively. Spin move and a good one. Nice. Right with the hoop. That time Titus Wright knew he had Holmes on him, but separated with the spin move. Got just enough daylight between him and Holmes. He was able to get the ball up to the rim before Holmes could gather himself and block the shot. That was a nice move. Ten on the shot clock. Pull up jumper. That won't go, but it bounces once and then Holmes is fouled. Working for the rebound. That is the fourth on right. That time Titus Wright had Deron Holmes blocked out. All he had to do was maintain his position. But he tried to improve it by putting Deron Holmes in the fifth row of the bleachers. 
causing the foul. And, I mean, Dayton's offense has really been about free throw shooting in the second half. I mean, they're not getting great opportunities in their half-court offense or their transition offense. It's really been about putting Western Michigan in bad spots defensively where they have to foul. And Dayton shot 22 free throws in this game. That's a ton already. We got 941 left. One out of two. Back to a 10-point lead. You have to say the Broncos have had their opportunities since getting back to within 10 points. They've cut it inside. Now it's going to be Western Michigan's turn to go to the free throw line on a block foul by Dayton. That time Western Michigan taking a page out of Dayton's book, getting the ball down low to Jafari Sims. Jafari Sims, I'm sorry, who's played pretty darn well. I mean, Jafari Sims has really given, I think, Western Michigan a gritty game. That, missing the front end of that one and one hurts. hands on the steal Hubbard terrible pass man that, that as a guard you can't expect any big man to catch that ball and it's just not gonna happen you might have been open but you just can't throw you got you got to take that ball to the rim or you got to pull it back out I mean this is Hubbard's going down the floor and he sees it's in man open but there's no shot I mean he couldn't count that with a catcher's man Running down the court, un almost underneath the basket. And now Mike back in the game. Coach Grant got exactly what he wanted from Brady Ewell. And take your hat off to Brady Ewell. He gave this team the minutes that they needed to get Mike a break at the point guard spot and get back in the game. So Brady Ewell did his job and did it very well. So you got to give that young man a lot of credit. But I'll say it again. Western Michigan did not test Brady Ewell. Now, I'm not saying Brady Ewell would not have lived up to that test. He might have gone out there and starred if they put some pressure on him. But Western Michigan never made Brady Ewell prove that he can play point guard in this game. And I don't understand that. I don't understand it. Ten-point lead for the Flyers. Eight and a half to play. Western Michigan cooled back down now shooting 33% from the floor. Part of that is the flyer defense to be sure, but part of that is missing some good looks. Nice. That's finishing a tough shot. Basic shooting that over Duran Holmes. The degree of difficulty was very high on that shot. Eight point advantage. Block offense for Dayton. Get it back down to the big guys. Get a foul. Go to the free throw line. I think we've seen this recipe before. Foul is called. We'll take a break. Just inside eight minutes remaining in regulation. Western Michigan at one point trail by 19. Now they're down eight. Up that lead. I think the injuries and the shock of those injuries not being able to prepare for it went into that a little bit. Tonight, I'm, you're just seeing a... There's a little bit of a lack of chemistry in the half-court end because you got play, players playing in different spots. And Dayton has become very, very one-dimensional offensively without the ability to play in transition, without the ability to make a lot of shots from the perimeter or create a lot of penetration with the dribble. They've become a post-oriented team that is forcing the you know them to score points from the post or from the free throw line. And that's 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 allowed Western Michigan to play poorly and stay within within this game. I mean, Dayton shooting 21.4% from the field in the second half. They've made three shots, three shots in almost 13 minutes of basketball. That's awful. Nine-point lead, chance to cut that by as much as a third. Four on the shot clock. Short shot up, shot is short. Rebounds long and another possession for the Broncos. Looking to penetrate, unable to do so. To the wing for three. Nope. And Holmes. 
Good look there by Western Michigan. Just cannot make them drop. Western Michigan just terrible from the three-point line. One of nine in the second half. You're not going to come into Dayton. I don't care who's playing for Dayton. And go one of nine and expect to win the game. Blakeney. Home. This is the shot, but he's fouled. Did I say that Dayton's offense has been one dimensional in terms of throw the ball in the post, get fouled, or make a shot? I mean, that's what they're doing. That's what they got right now. They, they don't have perimeter guys who can put the ball on the floor with confidence and make plays. I mean, Tamani Kamara can, but he can't do it every time. I'll tell you, when the competition steps it up, it's going to be interesting to see if this Dayton team can rise to the occasion and get some players to make some perimeter plays. Because just feeding it down to the post, as talented as Holmes and Kamara are, just feeding it down to the post is not going to beat a lot of good teams. That's why I think Mustafa Amzio is a huge player for this team going forward until they get Elvis and Smith back. Because Mustafa Amzio, with his size, he can make plays on the perimeter. And they need him to make plays on the perimeter with Tamani Kamara. Norman for three, in and out. And there's Amzio. Sharv jumps. That last foul, by the way, for the Broncos was Sims. That's his fourth. Mob in underneath. block. It's all the block for Dayton. They're just beating him down low. 621 remaining in regulation after a bit of a run by the Broncos. West Michigan has no answer for it. I, I get it. I mean, Deron Holmes is a wonderful talent. You can't really have much of an answer one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't think Western Michigan has been able to figure out any way to stop him. And now Tamani Kamara, again, making plays on the perimeter that he's going to need to make. And so you get Smith and Elvis back. Good work from Kamara defensively. This pass. That's the best half-court offensive possession that Dayton's had in a while. Got a screen, got a nice cut by Amziel and Blakeney with a nice pass. And Momsiel showing some patience down low when he caught the ball. Well, those missed opportunities when the game was around nine points are coming back to haunt the Broncos now. They are hanging in, but the clock is working against them. Nice play by Tafari Sims with the jump hook over Deron Holmes. Hey, Tafari Sims has shown a lot of grit in this game. Char jumps. Travel. That time, Mike just lost his feet, got a little ahead of himself, looked, was looking to make a play. I like the aggressiveness. He's not afraid to put the ball on the court and dribble into traffic. He's got to pick your spots there. Now Norman leads Western Michigan in scoring with 10 points, and he missed a chunk of time with Krantz. Tough spot. Nearly stolen is the ball by the Flyers. Nearly the key word there. Shot is up. Put back won't go. A couple of near misses for Western Michigan. Now Tafari Sims draws the tough duty of checking Deron Holmes on the post. That's tough. Shot for three. Front iron. Omsil gets his own rebound. Four and a half remaining with Dayton up by 13. Shot clock inside 10. Movement in the lane. Turn around. We'll go. Yeah, same, different players, same theme. We're bigger, stronger, more athletic, more talented than you on the block. So we're just going to keep going down there until you stop us. And Western Michigan has not been able to stop that all night. They fouled, but they've not been able to stop it without fouling. Four ten, the time remaining. Now Josh Norman on the sidelines for Western Michigan. Doesn't look like he's hurt. Just looks like he's getting a blow ahead of the uh, four-minute TV timeout. 
That's a nice touch on the finish there by Sims. Hey, that kid's played well tonight. It hasn't been a thing of beauty, but he has played hard. He's been effective. He's made plays. He's been all over the court offensively and defensively. And he has nine points. He's managing to, your comment, staying on the floor with four fouls. And going against Deron Holmes and giving up like six inches. <laughs> that is tough duty. Baseline move. And the whistle blows. Hubbard called for the foul. It's getting late here at the University of Dayton Arena. Broncos are close, but they got some ground to make up. They're on the short side of a 57-44 scoreline. The home team led by Holmes, 24. By 13 with 3.36 remaining. And Blakeney at the free throw line, whereas a team Dayton has been inconsistent on the evening. Now, I don't think Lamar Norman Jr. scored in the second half. I know he was out for a few minutes to start the second half, but I don't think he scored in the second half. Yeah, you know, give a lot of credit to Dayton. You know, their defense really able to stop Lamar Nor Norman Jr. Where not many people have been able to do that. I think it's been a key to Dayton holding on to a lead in a game that probably closer to Anthony Grant would have hoped. Turnover. Much to the chagrin of the Bronco bench. Charles Young. Now Kamara and Amstiel. In underneath, great entry pass. Blakely got lost in the wash and an easy finish. Yeah. Stop Amzio made the pass. You know, it was like that was a you know almost like a uh, eighth grade pass because it was so open. I mean, you got to make that pass. But uh, that was you know that was just good offense by Dayton and a complete breakdown by Western Michigan on that wheel play. And we just talked about some of the challenges the Flyers have faced playing with a lead. They've answered it nice tonight. Pass. Amstiel from Sharajan. It's good. With a little flare here off the great steal by Amzil, kicks it over to a 6 7 point guard and then the behind the back with the right handed pass. Remember the, the other pass on the block when he made that behind his head pass. So we've got a behind the back and a behind the head in his freshman, first freshman start at the point guard spot. And again, you know, has he played a perfect game? No. You know, he's got six assists, but he's got six turnovers. Okay. But if he's, has he shown. The athletic ability, the flair, the confidence to be able to give you good minutes at that spot and make a difference. Yes, he has. And that's got to be, you know, for a lot of Dayton fans who were worried about, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do without Kobe Elvis and Malachi Smith out there? Well, Mike has shown that he can step in and give you some good, solid minutes from that spot with talent and with the ability to make some plays that, Lot most freshmen cannot make. Eleven turnovers on the night for the Broncos, converted into 16 points by the Dayton Flyers. They got back to within eight here in the second half. Kamara and his teammates have tucked this one away. 90 seconds remaining. Still working hard defensively. Norman just yeah. not his night nope well, a lot of that date I mean this, I guarantee you this is the best defensive team that Western Michigan and Lamar Norton have, have seen all year I guarantee you that now coach Grant calls a timeout so he can get some subs in probably thinking I just don't want anybody else to get hurt. Yeah. Just we get somebody in there so that we can get our Amapule is in. And Yule on the ball to finish this one out for the Dayton Flyers. And on a team with a bunch of players with great names, Atticus Schuler just comes in and 
adds to adds to the wealth. Pass to Schuler. It's knocked away. Fighting for the loose ball at the other oh. end. Oh. And that block oh, with the KG. putback. Yeah, he hustled it. You got to give him credit. KG coming down the court, not giving up in the last minute of this game. Around the rim and drops off. Inside 30 seconds to play. Long Four. distance three pointer won't go. Ball's on the floor. Shot is up. Won't go, but a foul is called. Caleb Washington called for the foul. The 18 foul, his first, having just had it again. So if you're a Dayton fan, fan coming out of this game, you're gonna. If you didn't watch the game, shame on you, by the way, if you didn't watch the game. But if you didn't watch the game, you're gonna go, okay. You know, 20 point win against Western Michigan without Malachi Smith and Kobe Elvis, you're feeling pretty good. If you watch the game, you're going, okay, this was not a 20 point game. This was a lot tighter than it should have been for a lot big long stretches. And that's not going to make you feel better. I mean, but you got to understand this Dayton team more than any, a lot of any other Dayton teams we've seen. They're a work in progress because of the injuries. They would have been a work in progress without the injuries because they had key kids coming off the bench and playing and playing in different roles. So they had to get used to that. But this this Dayton team is especially a work in progress with all the injuries they're facing, all these key players coming in and playing different roles in extended periods of time. We're going to see where they develop. They're going to have, unfortunately for, for Dayton, they're going to have to figure it out quick because you know, it doesn't stop from here. Clock will expire. Coaches exchange a handshake. And the Dayton Flyers, after losing three in the Bahamas, right to ship the first consecutive home game as they beat Western Michigan. 67.